Hello. What you doing? Making some scissor up. You know, talk over our new plans. Yeah, absolutely. All right, welcome to the vlogcast. Am I right? Yes. What is deemed a vlogcast? It's like a vlog and a podcast. We're vlogging, but we're like on the podcast mics. So we just want to sit down and take a minute to kind of, you know, breeze over our plans. We probably won't go into every nitty gritty detail because we want there to be some surprises, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like where the chairs are. Yeah. Like, that. like where will the chair be? Anything that people need to know about architectural plans? Like the first time we did it, I didn't know. I didn't even know that what an architect was, honestly. Mm. I didn't know that like they, they're in charge of just... A, a lot of them have more creative elements than others. Mm -hmm. Like some architects really have like a heavy hand in designing and conceptualizing the space. Mm -hmm. Whereas I feel like on our first go around, we just said, hey... Mr. Architect, here's exactly what we want. And in order to have a project, you have to have the plans. So he just mm. literally drew up our plans. And I feel like this time was more or less the same, but this architect kind of has weighed in on a few things, right? Yeah, absolutely. I would say definitely more so than last time. Yeah. Um, the architect we're working with, she is a good designer. She could definitely sit down and design a space. We just can't really afford someone else to design our space honestly yeah that would be a cool luxury to have but if you look in our first cafe you can you can understand that a designer wasn't paid to do it but yeah. i think that's a part of the charm for sure uh and it's a part of just the necessity of uh us being able to accomplish and put our money towards the other things that we want to do things like dunk tanks yeah dunk tank like the axe throwing Axe throwing, pin the tail on the... Barista. Barista. Yeah. Yeah. Pin the teeny beanie on the barista. Yes. Things like that. You take these and you give them to the, the, the GC. Yeah. Yeah, the GC, in, in case anyone out there doesn't know. I mean, this vlog is called yeah. How to Start a Coffee Shop, right? And so we're, we're just going to speak as if no one knows anything, okay? So a GC, which is a little acronym... Uh, for general contractor, okay, stay with me. He or she is the, you know, the director of all of the subcontractors. So the GC is like the project manager that they they tell their electrician, all right, hey hey electrician, check out these plans. Look at all of the uh, electrical elements. You know, like we need to we need to drop two twenty power here with this many amps. They'll talk to their other subcontractors, the flooring people, you know, the plumber, the uh, frame framer. You say like HVAC. HVAC guys, like roofers. Yeah, the GC is in charge of all that. Um, last time, I felt like you and Ethan were kind of like the GCs in the sense because, similar to an architect, there are varying, you know, varying degrees of, of general contractors in terms of how much they are involved, how much they're directing the project. I felt like we were kind of always on our GC's booty about like keeping the project moving along. And mm -hmm. um, I hope it's not that way this time. And if it is, you guys will hear us complain about it on this vlog. But so far it's been great. They seem like they're staying ahead of things. Like yeah. they're, some, they're telling us to submit plans before we absolutely have to. And even a step back from all of this, we you don't just do this because you want to, the architect and the GC and all that, because we, we've talked to several people in the past who expect to be like, I'm going to open a place and I'm just going to bootstrap every single bit of it. But you have to have signed off plans to be able to submit them. You have to have a general contractor submit those plans. So it's not really as much of a choice. When you are looking for an architect and a general contractor, you want someone who can be as lenient as possible towards what you want. And that was really, we were really on that side with cafe number one. Yeah. Um, this guy would have let us do anything we wanted to, and to an extent where we kind of had to, or it wasn't going to get done. With this next cafe, we found someone who is definitely more skilled, is definitely way better at managing his time. You know, Lord willing, if it pans out with him and the 
bid goes well, obviously. Right. Uh, but things are looking good. And he essentially said to us, you know, like, I'll let you do whatever work I can within my grasp. Obviously, he's not going to let us go in there and start, you know, like doing all running all the electrical ourselves, which we could do, maybe. <laughs> which we could not do within code. We yeah, could do it and it would work. Code. General contractors usually hire out subs, and they might have one specific area where they are skilled in it. Like a lot of general contractors are also framers or electricians, and they might do that themselves. Right. But at the end of the day, they are just lining up subs. They're supposed to line up subs and manage the subs, and they get paid essentially a percentage fee to manage their subcontractors. I know some do it a little differently, but that's usually how it goes in most of the industry. And right now, it's really a bummer because material prices have skyrocketed. And a lot of those general contractors are just charging that same percentage. 10% of a project now is a lot more than 10% of a project two years ago. So taking a look at these, again, probably not going to go too crazy deep on some of this stuff, but at the end of the day, we just wanted to show you all kind of our floor plan. We Ethan did a gorgeous sketch yeah, last he, episode. There's going to be two poop stations. You just learned so much about what works and what doesn't work in a floor plan from working in cafes over the years. And like one of our, our core values is details matter. And one of the things that you always say, Big T, is we want to care about the details so much to where the customers and the guests, they have a better experience and they don't even necessarily know fully why they're having a great experience. Like, for example, we, uh, we have the front door, uh, obviously down here and we wanted to place the, the front, this is the front bar concierge bar. You see these POS, that's kind of where the point of sale that's where one of them will go. I think that might be drawn up a little bit. Yeah, so one of, one of the points of the main point of sale will be right here. Mm -hmm. And we want to have enough space right here in between the front door and the point of sale to where they can when someone walks in they feel like they're seen and they feel like they're greeted and they're in the right place. But and so you know to make that happen it has to be kind of close to the to the point of sale. It it can't be so close that there's not enough room for the line. One of the big wins for this cafe, and I think we, we mentioned it in the last episode, is we get to have a central bar. Um, and so these two islands, we have three floating islands here, um, and that makes up our service bar. Uh, Those lines in the middle are just, I think, distance indicators, just to be clear, these ones. Yeah. This, is, this will be the aisle of sorts yes the hallway isle of valor the reason why we, we we wanted to have a central bar in the first location in 44 milton but um in order to it, it, if you're going to have a central bar you have to run the plumbing and the electrical underground and cut through the concrete um at our cafe in alpharetta the uh the bar is attached to the wall you know where all of the plumbing and electrical is so they just run it through the wall and through the ceiling um i guess just through the wall right yeah um and then it kind of comes through our two bars but this time you know it's sort of a floating bar in the center of the cafe so it's going through the the concrete and um we just think that i guess i guess we'll see right but a central bar just you know it seems the best ease of use as far as like the ability to move around the different different areas. I remember working somewhere where I was working behind the bar and you know there's the point of sale and the espresso machine right here, but in order to get out to where the tables were, to, like to where the guests are, you had to like go all the way back around. It's just yeah. so hard to get out of the bar. So with this model, you're able to move completely freely. And that is another uh, you know, a detail that isn't necessarily right in your face, but we want our the pit crew there to feel free to go and like, you know, bring water to these people at these tables. We want to try to get as close as we can to a full service model, uh, you know, without losing that traditional coffee shop model. So if it's hard for a barista to, to get out from behind the bar, they're just going to be encouraged less to like go and serve customers that are already at the table as they have time. 
Yeah, so Central Bar, another fun aspect of this will be our bar seating. We've never yeah. uh, dived, doved, divin, dividend? Divved. We've never divved, delved. We've yeah. never delved. Is it really that? No, no way. Okay. Into bar seating. And so we're going to have several bar seats here. This is drawn up as a circle right here, but it actually won't be. It'll just be a square. Uh, and we'll, we'll have people kind of sitting, hanging around and watching us. That's a little bit of pressure. So we didn't put bar seating directly in front of our main expo area, which is this. That's where our espresso machine will be. So that we can hand out drinks directly right here. Right. So the flow service will essentially be someone walks in here, they're seen, they go and they get in line. They order their drink right here at the POS or on weekends when it's busy, we might have another one here. Drinks ordered and then they walk over to our waiting area, which is this freaky shaped table. It's a standing table now. It is. A, yeah. No it chairs. Is. No chairs. So you stand here. You're also in the area where merch is and water and drink fixings will be right here. Right now in the cafe, our merch is right by our point of sale. Um, and while that's great in terms of like people being able to look at the merch while they're standing in line, they're not standing in line for that long, especially where the merch is. So I, I bet we'll sell more merch here because people can just kind of see it over there in the corner, like after their purchase. So the way for the drink here, the drink will be either handed out here or run over to the person. And then they can come down here. And the preference is definitely to exit through this door. So you have an entrance and an exit, which will be a huge change from where we are. Obviously, we're not going to rope anything off and make it to where you absolutely can't come in the door. But there will be some encouragements to do some specific things there. With this whole cafe, we're just shaping it off of what we've learned from our first cafe, largely. And one of the things that we really love about our first cafe is our community tables. Um, and we've got one of those here in the corner. Um, we've always wanted to have two things. One, booths. So we've got these U booths. Um, I imagine, you know, like groups of people going there and hanging out, probably more like casual. Mm -hmm. Like I can't imagine like, you know, like a, a business meeting of five, yeah. like scooting in there. Totally. It might happen if they were freaky people, but um, yeah, freaky people. they're weird. You know, the other thing that we... Uh, that we've always wanted to have is like a little lounge area, um, which I feel like is very classic coffee shop to have some couches. So um, we'll have a, like right here on the left side, we'll have a couch, a little coffee table, and then two armchairs, um, which will be awesome. Um, and this is sort of like a, you know, more of like a Japanese ramen bar style seating where it's just, you know, people kind of, uh, actually they're not even, these chairs aren't even facing uh, downwards. They're, it's a, uh, it's a booth right here with small little tables. Yeah. Yeah. There won't be chairs there. Yeah. I forgot. So it's not really Japanese style. Um, that'll be, that'll be another excellent place to wait for your drink if need be or overflow seating as you're waiting for something. Uh, there's lots of different options. Yeah. The other thing, um, we're going to have more, well, we're going to have two bathrooms. So yeah. that's huge. Check that out. Cause right now we just have one bathroom. Um, the other thing is we, our back room in our office will be together right here, right now they're separate. Um, and we'll have a back door. So like if employees want to enter through this door, they can, which is kind of, kind of reminds me of like a play, you know, it's like people yeah. are suiting up for their big day at the show and coming through the back door. Another amazing thing about this cafe uh, which is very different from our Alpharetta Cafe, is parking. Mm -hmm. We are, uh, and this is just the trade-off of like choosing locations. This cafe is a fairly normal like shopping center. You know, like right next door there's a, a yoga studio and then there's like a juice place and some restaurants. So it's... Papa's it's, spot. Yeah, it's, it's beginning to get like become more of like a downtown area. But at the end of the day, it, there's like a CVS or a Walgreens right there. And there's like a grocery store. So it's very much just like, 
I don't want to quite say a strip mall, but it's it's almost there. So that is less sexy uh, than our downtown Alpharetta location where there's tons of foot traffic. People literally just come to Alpharetta to walk around. But the problem with that is there's not a ton of parking. Like It's less of a sexy kind of downtown area, even though it's trying to become that more and more. But what you get is a ton of parking. And so. less price per square foot. Oh, yeah. And in a, a bigger space. This area here will be, you know, all booth with table and chair. Same here. So just lots of lots of booth going on, which yeah. we're super stoked about. We've always wanted to do that. I, I think I think we're we're bumping seventy seats in this place. Yeah. Definitely in the sixties, getting close to seventy. And that's not even taking into account that all of this right here will be a massive patio. Yeah. So covered. Yeah. A, a portion covered, a portion uncovered, so you you'll have options. I don't know if we said this on the last episode, but we are we're going with Mod Bar as our espresso machine. My mouse is on uh, the decaf grinder, so we're keeping that the same. And then we have our regular grinder right here with free throw in it. Um, we've got like our uh, knock box and our scales and that sort of thing there. And then no steam wand over here. So this is truly just a, a brewer island. Uh, group one, group two, group three. And then instead of putting a steam wand right here, we are putting another regular free throw grinder uh, right in this this area in between the last group and the first steam wand. We've got steam wand one. We've got a pitcher rinser right here with all of our syrups and all the lids, straws. And then you have uh, the other steam wand here. On a busy Saturday where we're fully staffed, we will have two expo stations. All you need for an expo station is a steam wand, a set of shaker tins, um, a pitcher rinser, and the things you need to finish the drink, like lids, straws, stuff like that. Um, and so we're able to have two of those stations, which in theory doubles our production. Mm -hmm. Like as long as Brewer keeps up and keeps supplying these two expo stations with their espresso, their matcha, their loose leaf tea, um, we will have double the the output, which is awesome because we have double the POS, um, and that's always the battle. And triple the seating. That's always the battle between like how fast are the orders coming in versus how fast can we make the orders. Um, so that's like our plan for like the cafes ticking. We're at full capacity. One reason why we put this uh, free throw grinder right here is we wanted to get, uh, we just want each person on the floor to be as efficient as, the, as they possibly can be. And so having the grinder right here allows single barring to be more effective. So if we, if it's, you know, uh, 7 a.m. on a Tuesday, we want someone to be alone, like one person on concierge and the other person is the barista. You know, they're making all the drinks. It's much easier for them to make those drinks when they don't have to like walk up and down the production line, walk way over here to produce espresso and then come back way down here to finish the drink. They're going to be able to pretty much stay planted right here, grind their espresso, grind, you know, grind three espressos, lock it in right here. And then right there, they're at expo. People can single bar better, but also we have more capacity for like the really high volume stuff. Mm -hmm. One last thing is that we, uh, we have an, a big old ice well right here. So this ice well, you can tell it's, it's pretty long. It, it services both of these uh, expo stations and we're just kind of borrowing that concept from like the bartending you know, bar world where if you, you look behind a bar at a, a cocktail bar, like you've got your ice well with all of your ice, but in the ice well, you also have like all of your bottles, like in their case would be liquor, but I think we're going to, we're going to store our, uh, all the, the finishing ingredients to the products. So like our milks will live in the ice well, all of our syrups will live in the ice well, so they'll stay cold. Um, and that also allows the counter to be cleared of all of those things, which is particularly important because we have a mod bar. Um, and when you have a mod bar, if something's on the counter, something's on the counter, you can see it. So three, uh, three 
little uh, sections here. The first section here will just be Expo One's milk and syrup, all that stuff. The middle will just be full of ice. Uh, and then the right side will be Expo 2's milk and syrup. So just like when you work at a bar, you've got multiple uh, you know, wells for different bartenders to work. Each bartender is on their own island. It's completely self-sustained. And whenever you get really busy, you have both wells open. Um, whenever you start to close down for the night, you might shut down one of the wells and like clean everything on that side. So excited to have that flexibility. Uh, very brief look at the rest of this stuff. Here's where we're going to have our EK. So yes. EK 43 uh, batch brewer is it's under there. Yeah, under here. Same as uh, the 44. Yeah. Button. So we keep it out of sight. And then on top right here, we will have our pour over stations. Uh, so we're going to do two Curtis Seraphims for automatic pour overs. And then as far as the back bar, you have your not as sexy stuff. So you'll have another uh, ice well here. Uh, so that you can grab stuff from our kegerator, which will have probably six or eight draft lines, including all of our cold brew, uh, kegged lattes, seasonal beverages, sparkling water, kombucha, etc., and then hand sink, dishwasher, and a dish dump sink because our three comp is going to be in the back, which we're super oh, thankful right. for. Uh, the ice well is also going to allow us to have a bigger ice maker in the back, which is something that's going to be sick. Don't get too small of an ice maker if you're going to push some ice drinks. It is a pain. Uh, back, you got three comp. You got a stand-up fridge here. We're also going to put a stand-up fridge right here. And then a mop sink, a table. It's going to be a gorgeous table. And yet another hand sink. And then lastly, most importantly, a hot water heater. Yep. You got any feedback? You want to tell us anything? Tell us anything you're looking for? Tell us anything here that's stupid? What's stupid? Yeah. Leave a comment below with what you think is stupid yeah. about this. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, we gave you a little look into the, some of the design elements here. We're going to have some other fun things around the rest of here, some, some picture opportunities and whatnot. Yeah. But... We're just going to keep those to ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. You have to come yeah. see it. Oh, Ross, dude, you forgot to mention the, the toilets. Uh, they are shaped custom to each person's butt. The first cafe, you know, we wanted the, the bathrooms to be all about being fun and, you know, like the color, you know, blue in there. This time we're going more just like... Function over form. Function. And that is the valor difference. Be on the lookout for the toilets. We love you.